focused on these 160 acres here in Anaheim, California. This afternoon, Disneyland, the world's most fabulous kingdom, will be unveiled before an invitational world premiere, and you are guests. Art Linklater will be your host, and with ABC crews and cameras on the spot, will guide you through this truly magic land. You are now in the press room of Disneyland, which is equipped to service over 1,000 members of the worldwide press here to cover this truly great event. And to start the proceedings, we take you to the entrance of Disneyland and your host, Art Linkletter. That's not Art Linkletter. That's Mickey Mouse, the inimitable little character that started this whole story with Walt Disney 25 years ago, perhaps the most popular motion picture star in Hollywood. I'm standing here on the railroad tracks with helicopters roaring overhead and cars parking by the thousands. And I'm in front of the big Disneyland and Santa Fe Railroad station. And down these tracks, in just a couple of seconds, will come Walt Disney himself barreling in on a railroad train built to 5 eighths miniature size. Well, this, this job in the next hour and a half is going to be a delight. I feel like, well, I feel like Santa Claus with a $17 million bundle of gift packages all wrapped in whimsy and sent your way over television with the help of 29 cameras dozens of crews and literally miles and miles of cable. Now, of course, this is not so much a show as it is a special event. The rehearsal went about the way you'd expect a rehearsal to go if you were covering three volcanoes all erupting at the same time and you didn't expect any of them. So, from time to time, if I say we take you now by camera to the snapping crocodiles in Adventureland and instead somebody pushes the wrong button and we catch Irene Dunn adjusting her bustle on the Mark Twain, don't be too surprised. It's all in fun, and that's what we're here for. The grounds are loaded with about uh, 15,000 people who are especially invited guests of Walt Disney's. And they're here from movie land, from motion picture and correspondence, from every possible kind of activity connected with the opening of the eighth wonder of the world. In fact, I think I'll get off these tracks right now and go over and meet some of the people here waiting for the train to come in. And since this is a family affair, I thought you might be interested in seeing the rest of the link letters who are all gathered around me. And to show you exactly what happens now, I let them all take a little vote. Diane, you're six. Where would you like to go of all the places in Disneyland? Pick any one. To the great big castle where Sleeping Beauty is. Oh, you want to go to the castle. Uh, Sharon, you're eight. What would you like to see? I think I'd like to go to see Frontierland when Davy Crockett fights the Indians. Davy Crockett. Uh, Robert, what would you like to see? I want to take the boat trip down the Congo. And uh, Dawn? I think I'll take a cruise to the moon in the rocket ship over at Tomorrowland. And Jack? I want to see Bob Cummings. Oh, Bob Cummings. Lois, you take them all to wherever they want to go. Bob Cummings, come on oh, in here. I'm so glad your son said that. <laughs> yeah, you know Bob's going to help out here in jumping all over the grounds, describing the various things. And That's where do you right go first? Up. Well, I go down on Main Street here and go into an old-fashioned car called a Premier, and I'll be seeing you. In a couple of minutes. Fine. Ronnie Reagan, come on in. Yeah, how about that son of yours? I've been buttering up to him all morning, hoping he'd say that about me. Uh. Isn't this a riot today? Oh, it certainly is. And, Ron, you, your first job is down here in the town square. Uh, well, uh, right out here in front of the depot, yes, for the main street and the parade and so forth. We have lots to do. Get busy. Okay. So long, Ron. Thanks for coming out. Well, ladies and gentlemen, right about now, Walt Disney aboard the E.P. Ripley, the miniature Santa Fe Disneyland railroad train, should be barreling around the outskirts of this tremendous and fantastic spot. It's a mile and a quarter track. And it's a trip that's out of this world, because inside that circle is a brand new eighth wonder of the world. First, there's Adventureland. Yes, a visit by boat to remote and adventurous regions of the world. Then, of course, there's Tomorrowland. The time is 1986 there. The place is a city of the future, where a trip to the moon is an everyday thing. Then there's Frontierland. Ah, that's a visit to America's historic past, with Davy Crockett himself there. A legendary land made real. Fantasyland. Well, this is really the theme symbol of the whole Disneyland. 
and the thing nearest and dearest to Walt Disney's heart. Out this way, there's a heliport. And actually, helicopters land there with passengers from the International Airport. Then on around, you see the tremendous parking lot where 12,000 cars can be parked. 24,000 if, par if they pave over the first 12,000 and then park with others on top of them. Of course, that's a little the hard way. On the perimeter, out where those orange groves are, which surround this place completely, and, and this place was an orange grove itself a year ago, there are five motor hotels going up. And coming in the gate are all kinds of families. Hey, Danny Thomas. Hey, how are you? That's Danny and his gang and representatives of the press. Thousands are coming in. They're going through the magic tunnel on foot because no car can enter here. And like Alice in Wonderland, as you go on through that tunnel past the Disneyland Santa Fe, you find yourself in a bygone time. Another world. The clock has turned back a half a century, and you're in the main square of a small American town, the year 1900. Take a look around. There's the city hall, quaint and dignified with its post office, the place where the citizens of the town gather to exchange gossip and hear the latest news of the day. Fire station, oh, that's a special interest of the volunteer bucket brigade, whose horse-drawn engine and up-to-date hose and chemical wagon are a source of real local pride. Then there's the car barn housing the horse-drawn streetcar a great boon to speedy transportation, and that little old streetcar will be going up and down Main Street here in Disneyland about every 10 or 15 minutes, day in and day out. It goes by a whole flock of very interesting and quaint little stores. There's the Emporium, where a lady could buy Lyle stockings or a silver button hook, or for a dollar, the new pair of tan high button shoes. Main Street, USA, and every one of those buildings is five-eighths real size. The doorways, of course, and the windows are full size, but the buildings themselves are five-eighths. The people you see up and down the street, however, are full-size people. They were not made by Walt Disney. The old-time music shop should be in there somewhere. If you were a court and a gal, that's where you'd buy your mandolin or your banjo and start tuning it up for the Sunday canoe ride. Oh, you kid, 23 skidoo. <laughs> The town square is where the band holds forth, and those free band concerts were one of the big social highlights of the week, any week. Or the Grand Opera House, where a Jenny Lind or a Chautauqua lecture might take place. And if you were daring, you might go out with your girl for a ride in an 1898 locomobile, the hot rod of its day. Is that one coming up Main Street? Well, yes, and Bob Cummings is aboard. Take it away, Bob. Now, here I am down here on Main Street. I got my whole family with me, my lovely wife, Mary, and my daughter, Melinda, and, and Bob. You know, this is a Main Street, ladies and gentlemen, just like my grandma used to tell me about back in Joplin, Missouri. Sometimes she had a whole penny for herself to spend on a Saturday night. Now, all these stores are different. For instance, now, right over here is a candy palace. Now, that's probably where grandma got those licorice whips and the jujubes. And, of course, right next door to the left is the Penny Arcade, which is complete with all sorts of shooting galleries and kinetoscopes. A kinetoscope, in case you don't know, is the forerunner of the original silent motion picture. And of course, there's the bake shop. And then there's the jams and jelly stores. Mom, old grandma certainly loved those, those tarts and those rich lady fingers. Of course, on the corner is the ice cream store. I guess next to Mary and Grandpa, the biggest thrill she ever had was to, uh, was to have a dish of Tutti Frutti ice cream and a sarsaparilla. Of course, over on the corner across the street is an old-fashioned popcorn machine, if you can see it through the crowd. And say, on the Gibson greeting card corner right there, I think, is a monkey and, and an organ grinder. I can't quite see him now. Oh, here he is, there, right in front of the Swift Market House. That's where all of us ham actors will originally wind up. And say, if you can pan your camera down here a little further, here is one of the most famous motion picture theaters in the world. It'll be here at Disneyland. They run exactly six. Six silent motion pictures at once at the theater. Your camera's just coming around on it now, I can see. And believe me, if Grandma was here, she'd come and see uh, one of the series of Perils of Pauline tonight. Say, as a matter of fact, this is so interesting, Art. I think I'll take the whole family out right now and take a look at it. What do you say, huh? 